Hey guys! Matt Popovich here. Today in my series of Audi A3 videos, I'm going to explain what it means to have a low coolant warning and how to fix it from the perspective of a 2015 Audi A3 8V. When you first start your car, beeps and chimes will start going off like your car is very unhappy with you. But don't freak out as it's not the end of the world yet. Although it could be if you don't keep an eye on things. The first thing you're going to want to do is to keep an eye on your engine temperature gauge. Coolant has two functions. It keeps the engine from overheating in the summer and it protects the engine from freezing in the winter. I just started my car after it was sitting for a day, so the engine is still cold. After a few minutes, the engine temperature will creep back up to the normal level, which is where it should be while you are driving. It's okay to keep driving with the low coolant light on as long as your engine stays at the normal operating temperature you'll need to keep an eye on it. Ideally, you'll want to check the coolant level as soon as you can for some additional peace of mind. If the car doesn't get to normal operating temperature, or if it goes past that line, that's a bad sign and you should then pull over, open the hood, and check the coolant level. Let me show you how to do that now. First, we'll open our door so that we can pull this lever to pop the hood. We will want to park on a level surface so that the coolant in the reservoir isn't tilting to any side. Next, we'll go around to the front of the car and feel under the hood above the Audi symbol for a button or latch to release the hood. From here, we can find our coolant reservoir, which will be on the passenger side of the engine. As we can see, my coolant is below the minimum line, so we'll need to add some more. When the car is cold, the coolant should be between the max and minimum line. When the engine is warm, the coolant can rise a bit to be slightly above the maximum marking. That's okay. As it is right now, it's technically okay for me to drive like this, as I do have some coolant in the reservoir. I will just need to keep an eye on the engine temperature gauge while I'm driving. For coolant, I need to use G13 coolant as stated on the reservoir. The manual states that you can also use G12++, but I'll just follow what's printed on the reservoir. While you can technically mix the two of them, it's not ideal. If you want to switch from G12++ to G13 or vice versa, you should flush out all the old coolant first. G12++ and G13 will be pinkish purple in color. Do not mix it with any blue, green, orange, or yellow coolants as they are not compatible. Coolant can be bought as either concentrate, which is 100% strength, or as a diluted or mixed 50-50 concentrate and distilled water. If you buy concentrate, you will need to cut the strength yourself with distilled water. Do not use tap water, do not use bottled water, use distilled water. A little bit of a sidebar, if you've ever heard of the term antifreeze, that technically refers to concentrate, whereas coolant technically refers to the 50-50 mixture of concentrate and distilled water. They're sometimes used interchangeably, but while doing some research, I learned that they are technically different. Okay, circling back, I will be using OEM coolant, which is the coolant that the original equipment manufacturer, aka Audi, what they use. You're probably fine using off-brand G13 substitutes, but I personally think that coolant is cheap enough that I'll just buy OEM. The OEM coolant is Pentosin Penofrost E. And as far as the distilled water, you can get that from anywhere. Most grocery stores carry it. I'll have links in the video description and at my website pointing you to where you can purchase these. Now when you mix it, you don't have to go full Bill Nye with it to get an exact 50-50 ratio. The manual states that the concentrate should be at least 50%, but less than 60% of the solution. If you're in a place with extremely cold climates, it wouldn't hurt to be closer to that 60% concentrate. I'm going to half Bill Nye it and eyeball my solution. So, now that we've made our coolant, we need to add it to the reservoir. Before you open the reservoir, make sure you let the engine cool down. Do not open the reservoir when the engine is hot, as coolant will typically be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So to prevent burns, let the engine cool down beforehand. If you can't or don't have time, the manual states to use a large, thick cloth to open the reservoir to prevent you from escaping coolant and steam from burning you. Be careful, do not get drips anywhere, as the ethylene glycol, aka coolant, hitting a hot engine 
can catch fire under certain circumstances. Once open, add your coolant to get you between the minimum and maximum lines. It's best to do this slowly, especially if the coolant tank is empty, so that you don't trap any air in the line. I decided to take the anti-build eye approach whenever I created my mixture, and I required multiple attempts to get enough to get me between the lines. As they say, your actions have consequences. Now that we're topped off, make sure you fully tighten the lid and hear it click. We need it to be fully sealed so that none of the distilled water can evaporate and be a source for escaping coolant. Speaking of this, the coolant system is a sealed system. No coolant should be able to escape. Thus, if you're low on coolant, that suggests a problem. If you have to add coolant regularly, you should get that checked out, as you probably have a leak somewhere in the system. Regularly, as in every couple of weeks. If you need to add coolant once or twice a year, it's not a big deal, as coolant is pretty cheap to add. But you shouldn't have to do that because, as I said, coolant is a closed system. Once we close the hood, we're free to drive off and keep an eye on the engine temperature gauge. But our work here is done. You do not have to reset anything in the car for the low coolant warning to go away. Once you drive it again, the sensor should be able to read the coolant levels and the coolant light should turn off. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully this helped. If so, feel free to give the video a like so that others can find it easier. If there's anything I missed, feel free to let me know that in the comments. I'm working on a whole playlist of Audi A3 videos, so feel free to check some of those out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Let's go.